Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Tris and this is Double O'Neill and it's a pleasure to have you all here to share with me my journey with my model railway. As you know, I've been doing a lot in the loft over the past number of episodes and that's been great, but sometimes we have a bit of hot weather and I do bits downstairs, which has been really, really nice. I want to do more. I've got the 009 layout, which I need to do I kind of think a few more buildings and then I'm going to play with the scenery so I'm going to probably do them in some episodes coming up so I'm looking forward to that and the layouts upstairs, I want, the next things I want to do, well not upstairs, it's in the loft, um, is the, uh, can't talk, is the hills. The hills are what I want to finish and they will be alongside where the mountain finishes, works its way across. There'll be little portals so then you can see through, which will be really fun for me because you'll be watching, as well as I have some ideas for when I do videos of different things that I can do. So looking forward to that, as well as when you get to the end where um, it'll be the opposite end to the mountain, we will have uh, an entrance, you know, cave entrance, whatever, and we can have um, a nice tunnel entrance and that will look good I think and that will finish off that end and then I can actually start working on the rest of it work my way around and see how it's going to look not really sure what I want to do with the other side for the station but hey that's fine what am I going to talk to you about today that you're going to see well one thing I want to show you and I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with them is these laser cuts um, boxes and you're thinking what well, what kind of box is it well if we pull the front off let's do this that's all right i'm gonna pull it at the right angle it comes off easy enough just didn't want to hit myself in the face these are for what you can imagine it is for putting your locos in your rolling stock your coaches keep them nice and then you can store them one of my biggest bits of trouble um, that i found with being up in the loft is i don't really have any cupboard space in Cupboard space isn't always that efficient when you're trying to put things in and I thought let's get something like this and then I'll make some let's say some slotted drawer things to then slot these in. I got four of them they're about 14 pounds each just thought they'd be absolutely fine there's a lot going on with them someone's had to obviously draw these up and make them and so I'm gonna get some more once you know next time we get paid uh, when you get a few of these it adds up doesn't it as well as you want to do all your other really really fun things so i will leave a link in the description below if you want to see where these came from i just got them off ebay so i'll just find the bit off the website and just share it with you just put these bits out of the way keep us tidy the next bit is i wanted to talk about trees and it's something that I've been conscious of and a little bit shy on because you see some people with some really fancy looking trees and that's wonderful. And my dad had shown me how to do the trees and I'm going to do them at some point. But on eBay you can buy like 10 pieces of trees for like £5 and various different ones, some for £4. I'm just going to show you some of these and they're not, let's say, the best looking things. Um, I've got some different sizes here. And you'll see on my layout that I have a number of different ones. So that's these uh, wonderful things. Yes, they're very bright. You've got a slightly shiny bit where it's been moulded. Fine, very low cost. But until I have time to do it, I'm going to be running these. But what I want to do, and I've seen some other people do it on YouTube, um, is we're going to add some foliage to it, some flock, and give it a slightly different colour. I want to paint the um, the can't even use my words here. Um, what words am I looking for? The trunk. I'm looking forward to painting the trunk up in a nice brown colour and then I can add some different bits of flock. So it actually looks like a nicer looking tree. Same as these evergreens. Um, I want to do the same with that. So you just give them a little bit more of depth to that single colour and paint the, the bottom bits. So kind of give it I don't know, a nicer look. So I just wanted to share that with you. Again, I'll, I'll share a couple of links of where I got my various different ones from there because I never knew where to find them so I started typing in trees on eBay and you find absolutely loads of different ones. Maybe you just do that and have a little look there. So that's that. This weekend gone by I was very fortunate to go and see my dad and my mother and then my family came out later and we all went into the garden and by seeing them I 
live on my own at the moment so then I travel down within the rules um, to spend some time with my family it's very nice to see people um, and I'm looking forward to seeing friends in, you know in the future months and weeks and days so I got to spend time with my dad in the garage which was really wonderful and I took some footage so let's go over there we'll go see him and we'll have some fun we got the diesels out he ran some freight round, I don't know if I inspired him or if he just happened to have it going, but it was really good fun and I'm going to share that with you. See you in a minute. Ruby. Hello. You're right, darling. Hi. No sleep. So I'm here with my dad, um, we're, you know, with Boris's bubble, I can come and see a bit of family, so it's all good. And uh, dad's not done a major amount in here, but he's done some bits and bobs. But what we did today was um, look at doing a diesel gala. What have you actually done with the railway, Dad? You can give me a, a mini update. I know you haven't done um, lots, like you said before, but... Yeah, I haven't done very much at all, really. I've been working on the American one, which you've seen in vid pre previous videos. Mm. Um, it's been more sort of thinking and planning. Um, so what are your plans? I've, I'm just trying to work out what to do with the tunnels, was one okay. thing. that you see there, that's an old Bill Teasy mm. um, tunnel mouth. But it's about the only thing that will fit in that position. I see. So I was working out whether that would work. Hmm. Um, and I've also got to do something that, that end up there. Yeah, we've the got. Tunnel. What? What is? Have you and got I th I th anything? Well, I think the. I think it's scale. It's a down. I can't remember the name. It's, no, I can't remember offhand. We can always insert uh, it yes, afterwards. Yeah. I can put some words yes, up. Yeah. It, um, scale scenes or something like that mm. but they make some that's what all those cutouts are for from their templates okay so I'll download oh I those. see so that's that's literally yeah. matched what they've they give got you there. a template for them okay you have to pay like three pound or something mm -hmm. for the the, the principal okay. kiss sounds pretty handy so that's probably what I'll do for there mm. but none of them really fitted on this in this area so yeah. I'll be doing that I'll okay sort of maybe the built easy one would work yeah. better for there um, I've been thinking about what to do with the signals, which are rather. Um, I think the cat's been. Yes, it's where the cat gets in here thing. and decides to play <laughs> on them. So there be so many people yeah. that would have spent hours building one of them. Yes. Oh yes. Um, be very yeah. emotional right the, now. The current ones I've used solenoids. Now this sort of the normal ratio okay. mechanism, but it's two solenoids and some of them. Well, if it's a junction, it won't be two. Yeah. But I've got some Merg um, servo mounts to go on them, okay. so I'm going to rebuild them. No, make, so I've got the hole, and you get the. You, they do one with a sort of one servo above the other. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll get that done. You can do that in all of them, then. Yeah, like, probably. Yeah. Yes, just yeah. play. I mean, some of the signals they work. They're they're working fine. Yeah. Uh, so you've got a few on the layout, haven't you? Uh, yeah. You've got working yeah, ones, have you? Yeah. Oh, they're down here. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's one. Yeah, there we go. Let's have a look at that one. Yeah, one's a bang, but 
you want to be a bit smoother. Yes, but uh, say if you use the servo and the Merg boards, mm. they do the bounce on the. Oh, well, okay, so it looks realistic. In, so I was going to do that. Hmm. Upgrade the. Up, That'd be good. Maybe I'll put some links into the video for that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got to. I think there's some there's some quite new boards there just mm -hmm. just bringing out that have got. Oh, that's great. I'll, I'll nice put them up on the website. On the Another website, thing. The Thinking about what to do with the turntable, the, the, ah. the mechanism on there, because it's a bit. You've got uh, an old Meccano system, well, haven't you? I'll show you underneath. Can you keep it going? It's Meccano with an ancient. I love it. Ancient motor sort of thing stuck in there with a nice growling mechanism. I see, yeah. As you can see, it sounds a bit, like a diesel. Yeah, it's a bit primitive. You can get fairly it does slow, the job though. It's a bit noisy. And, yeah, um, you need like a 1 in 100 kind of uh, gear yeah. ratio drop, don't you? Yeah, there's a gearbox there. Yeah. Um, I think it's about 10 to 1, plus the Meccano cog, the Worman cog. I see, yeah. I don't know what the reduction That's is on that. 60 to 1 or something yeah. else. Yeah. yeah. So, that, again, that, that needs okay. to be. Okay. Do so you want to redo that with a quieter mechanism? Yes. And so, as I say, maybe um, try and index it. Yeah. But, if it goes slow enough, you should be able to do it for yourself anyway. Yeah. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small we can sit together It's so beautiful You and me We meant to be In the great outdoors Forever free a step back to see the truth around you from a distance you can tell done anything much with the the dairy well i've seen area. a few additions you've got the is that a water tower yeah there's water tower there hmm. yeah and that's just the unloading area for the okay the and work. you've got a little cover there you didn't have the cover before oh that's over the top oh. no that wasn't there before oh. i'd have to check the videos but i don't believe yeah, so it was. i've got i was making some stuff up with i think will's sheets for mm -hmm. for that uh yeah there's a petite property i remember that there. one yeah that, that was there before yeah Oh, and behind, I'm going to get the. Uh, it wasn't the. I was thinking about the WWF um, Girder Bridge. Okay. But there's a. There's one. Again, that laser scale, cut one. Yeah, it's a laser cut okay. one. I think it's yeah. scale. Scale. No, that's. Maybe scale. I'll find that and I can. Yeah, put I'll. Um, if you, you can put that up, whatever it is. Mm. The, um, the, make, the link for that one. But they do a nice bowstring bridge. It's about mm -hmm. 35 quid. Okay. And it's just Doesn't the right length. It's got to be 400 mil from there to right. there, sort of thing. Okay. So I think that will. That would fill the gap mm. literally there. Yeah. And um, that's another thing. You've got the pigment along. on the plaster that wasn't there before. That's why I got my idea for my mounting. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you've got you've got it in places that's and ready everything. For, ready for the static graph. Yeah, yeah and it'd be good to see that on here. Um, yeah, that's something. You've got next. a lot to do. It's the ballast thing. So we've got some of the wooden scenic stuff. I'm yeah. going to mix together the, the, the end gauge, yeah. the fine stuff. You've put a join in here, which is good. So I guess yes. you're going to slice that's gotta it be, carefully. That's got to be cut. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the this is the effectively saw. the lift out section, which doesn't it doesn't it get lifted out. Lift out. 
about 10 years it's probably yeah. not, not so maybe out. one day uh, it will get lifted out um, the, the controller does but not the okay other. okay again that's that section that, that, that was an, an afterthought that part yeah. anyway but yeah you could um, work out some brackets for it this, this is just on some pegs metal sort of Mm -hmm. sort of dowels and whatnot not, not yeah. proper dowels just some sort of homemade it does things. the job it's not yes. gone out of alignment oh, yeah. is it no so, so i just um yeah just say slip down there get these track joins done done properly yeah we talked about where uh, maybe i'll make you some yes yeah so that's but cool. i've used say for here i i used old graham farish track which is the same it looks the same looking down it's the same format of sleeper yes as the um no, is this the is this the C and L? That's C and L. Yes, that's C and yeah. L there. But the actual old 1960s Graham Farish was mm -hmm. actually the right size. It was actually oh, four I millimeters see. to the foot. So I used that, slip some pico rail onto it to yeah. make a, a nice sturdy join. Okay. okay. But maybe you can say, go with your your method, and you can make some um, C and L compatible ones. Yeah, there. I'll, I'll, I'll make your... some up for you. I'll pop, I'll pop, I might do it for the video. If you let yeah. me take a bit of this track, oh, yeah, home, sure. I can measure yeah. it up. Might even yeah. have some. You sent me some bits, yeah. didn't you? I think you? That's, that might be SMP. That, okay. That's, it's not, but it's the same size. But it's, if you go so, for the, the CNL stuff. Yeah. So for you, you people that are watching that don't know what CNL or fine scale track is, is the track that I have on my layout is that the Code One Hundred, which when you look at the sleepers themselves, they're a lot closer together. They're kind of a slightly different shape, whereas this kind of marries up much more with how um, the real railways looked. The, the true scale. Well, that's, that's code 100 there. Yep, yeah, so this is code 100. Together. Yeah, so you can see that's the code 100, like what I've got, and that's what Dad's got on his layout with the, um, you know, the real, like if you went to a railway yourself and start measuring it up, when you scale it down, it would look more like this, whereas this is more like the, well, the HO scale kind of style track, isn't it? Yes, that's oh, the yeah, reality the older, of it. It's the old original, well, Hornby Dublow size track that it yeah. all started from, I think, and then Pico adopted that size. Mm. So, so that's well, it. So Dad's railways yeah. more modelled on a more realistic uh, track than what I've got. But yeah, no, it's yeah. great. And you just need to do some ballast. I saw you've got yes. some here. You've got yeah. the fine stuff. So yeah, that would look nice when it's done. Nice. No, have to have a ballasting party. Everyone come around and do it. That's so. right. It would take about three people a couple of yeah. days to do all this. Yes. So you've got yeah. all of this to do all around mm -hmm. here. So and yeah. Then weather, then weather it down afterwards with yeah. like gauge mask or precision paints or yes. whatever. Stuff. That's what was done here. That yeah. was just track colour okay. on the old one. So again, that's years old, but it's still it's still. Oh, the it still looks time. good. Yes, looks good. Yeah, it's just all so. this old lint and everything. Yeah, so we're going to have a bit of static brass on that at some point. Static eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. what's what's the oldest diesel here? Because I've got um got you I to get all your diesels out. What was probably oh, your first uh, one in the collection? The first one was that probably bought that Hornby one, that class thirty one. Okay. One. Um, and then the rest have been, oh well, no, possibly the Backman, no, the, the warships. Because mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've got an old mainline maroon warship, and that's quite an old one. But okay. all the rest are the newer, sort of finer detail I ones. I see, yeah. But chronologically, in the, in the British Railways times, that's, that was um, one, I think that was, a fa that was a fairly early one, that class yeah. 20. Although, the saying that, I think, uh, no, I, just, I think it goes, I don't know whether you go by the numbers, I don't know whether that. No, that no, that's newer. That one more. Sorry, mm. I think these two. That's okay. Were the yeah, the old Kobo and this this mm. Bobo, this class twenty. I yeah, I like the Kobo. It's very nice. Yes, but again, yeah. they all made both yeah. of those, so it's probably where I like them from. Yeah, I like the the white wheels and everything. Like yes, kind of quite, quite primitive. I mean, mm. That one there, they've that's even got spokes, spokes wheels, and you can. Can't quite I'm see. Trying to get in with the camera. Yeah, you can yeah. just pick them up there. So quite sort of antique looking. Yeah. It's the same as this this one over here, this early warship. Yeah. No, that was that again that's got Yeah, yeah you can spot just them, the same. Yeah, yeah. So um sort of, I think they only made about five of these in real, so Oh really? <laughs> yeah, just made so a few. There's more models of them than there are. Yeah, but, oh yeah. And then say the other warship took over, no, the mm. one. Yeah, you can see the everything's over on the outside, it's more like a broad gauge yeah. railway kind of style. Mm. The wheels on display. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And so you've got your 08 over there. Yeah. As well. And then yes. you've got your the, the, other Did You say it's an 04? 04, 04, I think yeah. that one was, yes. So, yeah. yeah. Nice, cute look to them. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. So, so, when our next come, there might be 
what would you say would the next thing to be done? Ballasting or static grass? Ballasting the static grass over the back. So we've got, you said about um, trees last time we were here, didn't you? So you probably yes. need to do a few of them as yeah, well. I've got quite so a few. Got some down here. Yeah, I've got lots of the actual um, frames, the actual mm. armatures made, so to speak. Um, but I've been using wooden scenics mm. um, foliage, but I've Charlie on Chadwick hmm. on yeah Charlie on Chadwick Charlie. was talking about tremendous, which uses a a sort of a fine mesh that you put on first and okay. then a cork scatter. I see. So I'm tempted to get some of that. Yeah, okay. It looks a bit more delicate than the wooden scenics. Yes. It looks like it's, it's a fe feature tree. So is this a kind of like a? a they will, yes. Are you just going to drape that, what it is over yeah, the top? Yeah, that's just a lap you just sort of have to sort of tease all that out mm -hmm. and you stick it on yeah whereas this other tremendous stuff uses this other i can't remember what they call it now i'll try and find a link for it's that it's a then. um it's a sort of mesh that you put on first mm -hmm. tease all that out then you drop then you spray it and drop yeah. scatter onto it but they use cork scatter as well which i rather like okay rather than ground foam yeah and um, i used to use that years ago there's a company called bta used to make it yes it's still stunned on these old hedges but that's got not okay the, some of their their stuff and then they just sort of disappeared mm. so i was i like the like the idea of that no that's anyway, great that's what i was looking into okay as well so well i guess we'll have an update when i next come down yeah, oh yes so, so it's that pile of you could always look at those yeah <laughs> do a little shot of those and say that's yes this is our big group of trees yes they uh, need to be um they look brilliant once you've got it all on there yeah but okay well, oh, no, that's cool, though. But thank you for, okay. uh, for having a little chat with me about it. Big thanks to my dad for uh, letting us have a little look. It's been okay. uh, been good to be here. And we go Thanks back you. to my room and we'll have a look at what else I've been up to. We went into the garden after doing that and we got various spits going. We attached the GoPro to those engines and, yeah, it came out really, really nicely having a look at it. But that's not going to be on this episode. We're going to have it on the next episode. I'm going to put it in the mix. There's a lot. We got the live steam out as well. Had that going around and it was good. It was really good. And I think my dad found it quite fun as well. So I guess he wouldn't do it otherwise if it wasn't. The next thing to talk about is fixing my buffers. Looking down, I'll make a little list to remind myself of what I'm looking at. Um, but fixing my buffers. I guess some of you um, don't have this issue because you look after your things. But when I was younger, I didn't take care of some of my things. I'd shove them in and if a buffer broke off, nah, it's just a buffer. Whereas now I'm looking at some of the things that I did about 20 plus years ago and I wasn't happy. And while I was fixing this kit, this is a Cooper Craft kit for a Great Western van. And I noticed that all four of the buffers are gone and I was a bit frustrated. And so I messaged dad and I said, where do I get these from? And he mentioned dark castings. And that is, Dark Castings um, have a number of different brands, I guess, under the name. I might have got this all wrong. Um, but MJT, oh, let's get that into uh, focus. So this is MJT under their brand. Oh, again, I'll put a link. I've got lots of links to go up. A link underneath of where I got these from. And these are Great Western, Rigid Wagon, Buffers, Non-Fitted. Um, and all I did was... Well, I had some of the detail left from the buffer. I got a knife, I trimmed that off, I drilled a nice hole. Um, in the end, it was kind of a nice hole. I had to kind of manipulate it a bit to get it on the exact centre afterwards. And then glue it in place, and then we just repaint up, and they're really, really nice. Um, we'll put some nicer close-up shots of this that you can see in my hand. It works out pretty, pretty nicely. And I've got more wagons to fix. I got one here that i did when i was younger i've got a missing wheel there i've got one buffer this side it's always a, a tricky business from when you're younger and you didn't take care of something to now and i can't even find the bits that had broken off even if i did i guess i wouldn't have stuck them back on but no i'm looking forward to repairing all the things that i never finished when i was younger because you spend a lot of your life going through some things that you don't always want to finish and you think I'll do another day. I didn't think at that point I'd do it 20 years time um, or maybe even longer than that. I'm not even sure when some of these little projects were done. But anyway, that's pleasing for me anyway, knowing that I can fi finish these. And uh, yeah, I'll show you on the next video if I get it done um, with it all finished and do some laps of it around the track. The other bit that I um, really enjoyed was 
dad gave me a box to go through because I said to him have you got any old you know odds and sods that you don't need don't want or is you know you're never going to use so he gave me this box which had all sorts in there and so I had a hunt through and I've picked out a few bits to show you not because of look what my dad's given me but it stood out to me I was looking at like this accessory pack this is a Slater's accessories and um, just some assorted luggage it's not the assorted luggage which is I want to talk about I want to talk about the price that's 38p for a little packet and I guess this was a number of years ago when that was the case but I always think about have our wages gone up that much relative to how much these have gone up um, so yeah it's it's wonderful how you know that price I'd have to go back in time and buy lots of bits and bobs like that got some dustbins some um, little um, white metal ones they were 40p so you're not fine this is some posters that will go on my railway so that would be really really cool and that's for Pendant Museum that these came from and they're 10p it's brilliant um, <laughs> I can imagine it'd be more like 199 now and then the last little bit was a load of fencing 34p some of the ratio fencing I want to put that up on the railway so I picked up a few things that caught my eye and then I saw the price and I thought wow um, the other bits that he gave me, which I'll put a couple of shots up of me going around the track with it. But don't worry, I'm not going to repaint these. These are LMS and I'm going to keep them as LMS. I've had quite a few messages from people about the fact that I could have LMS, Southern Railways um, and various other um, of the big four, I guess. Whatever, I have the private ones going around. Um, but I can have them going around with my Great Western stuff if I really want to. And I'm like, that's fair enough, that's fair enough. What I like to explain is I enjoy the whole, the uniform part of it. And it was really cool to have all Great Western. But I promise you I will do some um, running with various different things going around. Um, and thanks to Dad for giving them to me. Um, one of these is a cattle wagon. So it's nice. It looks really nice as well. Um, I'll put some shots up of them going around now anyway. So you'll see them going. Another Southern Railway wagon, which I'll leave that way now. Um, the next bit was a mainline one, more of a private five plank. Um, it's Black Rock Quarries, it is, but you'll see all this go around in a minute. Um, I'll be finished in a second. Um, then there's some large tanks. These are 20 ton tank wagons, cross fields. So I thought that's kind of cool. Um, and then this, which I haven't had these before, uh, there's some um, British Railway. Bulk grain hoppers, got two of them, which is great. So that would look good. Um, and then, and then a bogey um, bolster, a uh, great western one. So that's brilliant. So I'm surprised he didn't keep that. It's got the large um, couplings on. So I'm gonna put some smaller ones on, which would be cool. The last thing to talk about is model shops are open again now. And I went down to, I've got three that I could go to. I've got one in Northampton, one in Wellingborough, and then there's another one which is an upper stow, which is in Northampton Cheer. And it's a beautiful model shop. And, and the reason I'm talking about why it's beautiful is because of where it's located. It's in an old, I guess, a milk cattle um, place, like in a little dairy farm. I'm not sure exactly all the history of it, but they've got craft shops there as well. Um, but it's kind of craft shop. So you've got arts and bits and bobs. You can go buy yourself some beautiful pieces of art that are there. Um, and just, just various things. It's worth checking it out if you're in the area. So it's the old railway conductor. Um, and no, not the old railway conductor. It's just the railway conductor. And I'll put a little link under here. And I like going there because it's just very peaceful. It's relaxing. And yeah, I've been to the Wellingborough one a few times. And the Northampton one. I think I've been there twice now. Um, but while I was at the railway conductor, I picked up a nice um, private... Um, it's right, Busby's West Kings, Ken, Ken, Kensington, <laughs> um, number 16, five plank mineral wag wagon. Can't actually talk today. Uh, but I picked this up and it just looks pretty. I like the private, the owned ones. Um, they're just normally really, really bright. I don't know, is that so that it would stand out for like advertisement or when the wagons are being looked for? Or, you know, they don't want it to look like a, a kind of a state straight you know if it was brown like a southern railways one and it just had that written on it you probably wouldn't spot it i don't know maybe you guys can leave a comment and let me know but no it's nice and the one thing that i wanted to talk about was the fact that it was about 10 pounds when i look at some of like the backroom ones they're like towards the 18 pounds 
then I don't know what's different on them that makes them so much more expensive. I don't know if they have a lot more on overheads to pay for, but the Oxford stuff, it's really nice quality when I look at it. It, I don't know, it feels nice. It looks like it's got all the bits on it and it's, it's a tenner. Like, I'm gonna buy that one all day long. So I, it, and yeah, that's, that's what I'm gonna do. So, and a lot of the ones that I bought recently have been that just cause it fits within your budget. Um, at the end of the day, um, some of us don't have masses of money to go forking out on these things. So it's nice to find bargains like that and it's new you know for 10 pounds i'm sure there'll be um, a number of second hand things that aren't even 10 pounds um in the wagon mold of certain brands so it's nothing attacking uh backman i just yeah i'm just surprised at the difference in cost and so yeah i'm sure there's probably some answers out there i might even get some thumbs down for challenging uh, that but i've enjoyed myself anyway doing this video i hope you've enjoyed watching and that you might go and check out some of the Oxford range. I've got no affiliation or association with anyone, just giving you my honest opinion on things. Um, I just want to mention, I watched Charlie from Chadwick's latest video, uh, the hundredth video, and it was really interesting for me. I watched the whole lot because he talked about YouTube a bit and just really interesting, um, some of his viewpoints and just things to take in as well as some things that you feel you've already been doing. Um, so yeah, that's really helpful. So if you're already doing YouTube videos um, to do with Model Railways, check out that video. I'm sure you probably already have, but uh, yeah, I appreciate everything that he's doing with his channel and, and enjoy that. Um, as well as before I'd mentioned other channels as well. So I watched, like to watch Jenny Cook. Um, she put a nice one actually up, it was today, the time of me recording this, um, the War of the Worlds. Um, she was moving the lo location, you know, where it's been staying, because it's been staying at hers, and she was moving it to, I think, Leslie's. So that was cool to see. Um, and yeah, I'll just introduce channels bit by bit when I'm talking about stuff. I'm sure you're already watching these channels. Um, so yeah, so that's that. I just want to say a big thanks to the people that support my channel, my subscribers. Thank you very much for supporting me so far. I'm at 2,600 subscribers at the moment. And that's fantastic and it's growing all the time and my last video has been going quite well so that's been great uh, when you look at it continually growing that kind of gives you encouragement to want to do your next one whereas if you have a video that doesn't go so well you think oh, do I really want to be doing this you know but I enjoy it so I keep sharing and see what you all like just want to say thank you to my patrons we got Ian and Chris thank you for your support it's the early days and you've been supporting me from the beginning from the messages that you've been talking about Ian's one of my close friends so it's very nice of him to contribute to uh, already having to listen to my verbal diarrhea when I talk to him anyway so anyway it's been a pleasure you all take care and I'll see you on the next episode I'm looking forward to bringing you some I know some really cool stuff with the uh, garden railway as well as whatever else I've been up to in this coming week that's all from me I'll speak to you soon bye